So how do you do that? I wish it was that easy, just typing in whatever you wanna add, but in my experience, that method can only take you so far. You may know Midjourney just added in-painting, and after a few days of pushing it to its limits, in my opinion, the quality you can get is much better than any other model's version of in-painting. But oh boy, is it hard. It has taken hours of trying prompts and really figuring out how to get fine control over images with this new very region feature. The more I use it, the more powerful it gets and the more amazing I discover the results can be. I'm telling you, if old Midjourney lets you generate a cat picture from a prompt, new Midjourney lets you take that cat picture, give the cat a bow tie and have it walking away from an explosion while it's playing the ukulele. This stuff is so cool to me, but let's get back to our gecko example and I will teach you everything I know about how to use it. First off, to access inpainting, type slash settings into your Midjourney chat window. Click here to turn on remix mode, then generate your image. Upscale it and you'll see this new option, very region. Click on it to open up the selection tool, then this button is here for drawing rectangles or you can use this button for freeform selections. Then just draw in the part of your image you wanna change. But now let's slow down because it's here. It's now where we get to the complicated part. If you've done in-painting with other tools before or other models, you know there are a few different ways this can work. The most important question you should be thinking is this. What is your prompt actually supposed to include? Are you supposed to describe the new image in its entirety? Are you supposed to describe only how you want the image to change or what? Well, for mid-journey, what you have to do is write a prompt that describes what they call the region of your variation. Thus, the title of the new button, Very Region. Basically, depending on what you erase when you're in this mode, there is going to be a bounding box around what Midjourney has to generate. Very simply, your region is just a bit bigger than this box. So, when you're writing a prompt for in-painting, the words you use must always describe your entire region. And, to get a generation that meets your requirements, your region needs to make sense to the model. So let's take a look at our gecko and see how this works. This is actually a really good example of how hard this is because if you just erase the mouth, there is no prompt you can write to get human looking teeth in one go. Why? Because when your region is a gecko face, Midjourney will simply never think human teeth make sense. So how do we do it? Well, first we create a baseline that'll be a little easier to work from. So I write a prompt to take these little teeth and turn them huge. And of course it's not 100%, but out of four of my images, one of them has really thick teeth. Ugh. I hope I never have to say that phrase, thick teeth, ever again. Anyway, these will make a great starting point. First, let's fix this middle tooth and turn it into two front teeth. Now, my region can be inside my mouth, and the context of the... Oh, I hate this is still in my script. The context of the thick teeth makes it easy for Midjourney to follow my new prompt. Now let's look at the monstrosities. Oh my god, these teeth are exactly the kind of terrifying I was after. From here, we can use these teeth as a pattern to generate the rest of the mouth. Now that my region is bigger, my prompt needs to be a little weird to describe it completely. So a close-up photo of a reptile face with a human mouth and large pearly white teeth. But like I said, the context of the image should ensure the model has no trouble continuing the idea. And look at this. The top row of teeth look great, and now we can do the same for the bottom row. And fantastic. Hey, if you think it's creepy, you don't get to complain. You're the one who clicked on this video. I am just a slave to the algorithm and to thick teeth. All right, now just for fun, let's add a cigar. Let's write our first prompt and it looks pretty terrible. But again, this is a pattern that can give Midjourney a starting point. So let's erase all of it out from both sides, including a little bit of its mouth, just leaving this right here and see if we can get closer. All right. Out of all four images, I'd say there is only a small cluster of pixels that is useful at all. Do you see it? Yeah, it's this tip right here. It actually looks like a cigar. So now we can erase everything else up to the corner of this guy's face and generate. Now that's something we can work with. Make it a little shorter and push it a little further into the mouth. Now let's compare the before and 
the after. What a disgusting transformation. I know this was quick, but I wanted to explain this as clearly and simply as possible. I hope you learned something about controlling in painting in mid-journey. This method should really give you a ton of information to create things never before possible. Of course, I discovered this by experimenting with prompt engineering for a couple of days. If you want to see what happens when I spend six months prompting GPT-4 to turn it into an open, browsable library of knowledge, I think you'll want to watch this video next. See you there.